Hey guys, what's up? Let me just first say that if you haven't seen the last two videos I posted, which would be episode 11, parts 1 and 2, you need to check that out first because that was really fun. It was a really great video. And this is the aftermath of that video. This is a Volkswagen Type 3 that I cut the body off of and dropped it onto a 1990 Miata that has had its body cut off of it. So, what I need to do today is kind of assess what's going on here and see what fits and what doesn't and um, get it raised back up about, you know, about two feet maybe. Then I could start cleaning up all the welds, uh, fixing what needs to be fixed, um, rust repair a little bit here and there, and get it ready to actually come back down and weld it solid. And I'm really glad that I got it in here into the garage because it just got really cold, really icy and snowy. Really what I should have done if I could have was when I had the body up and just sitting there by itself, that's when I should have completely stripped all the paint and rust and crud and got everything off of this till it was down to bare metal. That would be the ideal thing to do and what most people would have done, I think, but the problem is I don't have those resources and mainly I don't have the time and the garage space to do that because I couldn't do it outside. Look what it is like outside. It's just everything got covered in an eighth of an inch of ice last night. So the thing to do was to bring it inside and the best way I could figure out how to do that was to drop it onto the Miata and drive it up here because this ceiling is uh, too low for it to bring in otherwise. So now I can lift it up about as, you know, maybe as two feet, about as high as I can get it. And then I will be able to have a little more access. And let me show you the, um, the old VW chassis that's outside. And you'll see why, you'll see what I mean. So yeah, this is why I needed to get it inside the garage. Because now, there is, this is ice. There's just a layer of ice over it about, there goes a bunny. And it is proper cold out here. It's like 20 degrees maybe. This is the saddest part though. Man, I really need those these wheels back on it. But you can see how, well you can't see how rusty it was. I'm going to show you how rusty this was. Now there's ice and snow on it, but yeah. I wouldn't want to have to repair that. That's just horrible. Alright, we're back inside the garage and let's just do a, a walk around here because this is actually the first time that I've closely inspected this since I got it in the garage. You know, I've been kind of resting my body the last couple days because this was like a marathon doing all this work. And I was exhausted. My back was killing me too. The f first part is that this is going to be a little bit of a problem. And I'm not sure how I'm going to have to cut it down, I guess. I really didn't want to do that because I spent a whole lot of time welding this up. And yeah, I know the welds are really ugly and are full of holes, but this took forever to do. Here it is. Um over on this side and you can see a little bit of the problem. What I also forgot to do is to clean up this surface. So I even have parts still in there sticking out and I need to completely remove all the paint because that's where it's, it's gonna be welded to. But maybe first before I decide what to do is get it all the way forward as far as I need to go and that'll tell me, that'll help me identify you know what to do. And before I can do that, I would need to put the the fenders back on here. Take one of the fenders, put it on, and then line up the center of the wheel well opening with this with this tire here. So that's probably what I'll do first, and then I can slide it forward, and then I can know, you know, where to cut. Let me catch you up to speed here. Um, 
First thing I tried to do was put the fender on, but I couldn't because this was in the way. And I started cutting it off, and halfway through cutting it off, I realized that maybe it would just be a lot easier if I did this. So I measured on the fender from one point where it met up with the body to the center of the arch. And I, that was roughly 21 inches. And then I welded on a 21 inch long stick, like so, and that'll help me line it up. And uh, there, I don't know if you can see this laser guide here. This will help me line it up. High tech.
Okay, so I've got this thing about as low as I can get it, I think. Um, if you look closely, this here is holding up the hinges for the roof, for the hood. And it's um, resting on that plate there. It's as low as it can go. It's as low as I want it. I expected this to happen. And I'll throw up a diagram so you can see what, what I have planned for this. I'm not going to cut this off because it's good strength. It'll keep, keep it uh, nice and stiff. And my plan is to have the, kind of build like a custom rocker down here that would meet with the pinch seam of the Miata. So then I wanted to see, is it low enough in the back for um, the wheel wells to fill out nicely? And so I threw on the rear fender. Yeah. What do you think about that? This is actually kind of surprising to me. So the fender is actually hitting it here. It's actually touching the tire right there. And it needs to be, you know, so it's colliding. It's, uh, it's too low. This is too low. So that has to come back up now. And it's more forward in the wheel well than I expected it to be because the wheelbase of my Miata chassis after I stretched it is 94.75 inches. 94 and 3 quarters inches. And the wheelbase of the Type 3 is 94 and a quarter inches. So what should be happening is this wheel should be further back in the wheel well half an inch. And it looks to me like it's forward several inches, maybe two inches. So that tells me that I really gotta put on the front fender and um, see I was using I was using this here and I did some measuring and I made this long enough and I welded it right there and the tip of it was supposed to line up with the tire and it is you know it lines up with the um, peak of the tire here that's how I got the vehicle forward and backward um, where, I, where it needed to be because the most important thing when I'm putting the body onto this is that the opening of the wheel wells matches the wheels themselves. So I cut this off and I have to put on the fender now. And if you remember, the reason why I didn't do that in the first place, because this piece of bar is stuck in the way, so I might try and just butt it up there anyways and see what happens. Maybe use some clamps. Um, or I might have to cut it off. But it's looking so far, it's looking like it's not far forward enough. It's going to have to go forward another inch, more than I thought. Which might be okay, but I'll have to find out by putting on the fender. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so this fender isn't on here ideally. It might not be lined up perfectly, but um, it's obvious that it has to come forward several inches, maybe three inches, maybe a lot. It has to come forward a lot. So that was not what I expected, and that's going to be a big problem. So here's how I messed up. You should be able to see this laser level here. Going up the center of the rim, the center at the top of the tire. And I measured to what I thought was the top of the wheel well arch right there. But really it's more like right there. You don't really see that until 
it's on the car like this. And so lesson learned, you can't really just measure to what looks like the top of the wheel arch because it just wasn't. Just it, it would be better if it was back there, not right there. And uh, I'm not sure how I messed that up, but I did. I mean, I'm just making this up as I go, you know. But it looks to me like it's got to come forward two inches. So I'm going to cut two inches off my stick, weld it back on. I can use that for measuring from just like I was using before, except hopefully this time it would be the right measurement. So that's a lot better, huh? Yeah, that's where it's supposed to be. I had to come forward two inches. And just to get it forward two inches, I had to cut off a whole bunch back here. And the hinges for the hood now barely fit. I might have to figure something else out. I definitely had to, I had to remove the windshield wiper motor and all the windshield wiper leakage and cut some sheet metal out where like the windshield wiper motor and also on the other side the brake booster where they attach to and it just barely clears the brake booster just barely and um i'll show you here i had to weld in i had to kind of cut these braces off and do this and that's not very good but so all of that just to bring it forward two inches and Okay, so I threw the seat in here and per some advice that I got online, uh, thanks Pete, if you're watching this, thank you. I was advised that I take a seat in here and look around because what's more important than the size of the wheels and how they clear the tires is how well you can see out the windshield. And if the body's raised up a little bit, the seat is still staying down here and the windshield now is a little taller, a little harder to see out of. Um, of course you would say, oh, just raise the seat. And I might do that, but you can't raise it too much because the steering wheel, unfortunately, is not one of those adjustable ones. And so I would either make it adjustable, I guess, if that's possible. It sounds like some engineering that I didn't want to get into. I could just simply raise it a little bit. It's on a swivel down there. Again, it's some sort of universal joint. But then I'd have to custom customize the dash a little bit. It would kind of go into the gauge cluster then if I did that. But the dash might not fit anyways because that definitely cannot stay right here. That has to get cut off because otherwise I won't be able to close the door. <laughs> Gotta be able to do that, right? So I thought that I was gonna be figuring out how high to get the body to get some wheels to fit, but really that should be adjusted with the suspension. I can lift or lower the suspension to get the wheels to fit. And I should get the body on here as absolutely as low as I can so that my seating position is correct. Okay, I'm placing the camera right where my head would be. And so you can see how you're really far away from the windshield. Whereas normally it would be like this. This would be your normal view, probably. 
it even closer. And now we would like back here. And it feels like you're like a kid in the back seat or something. It's like driving a car from the back seat almost. <laughs> so if it was just a little higher up, I think that would be better. All right. So I guess this is it. This I'm gonna get it as low as I can. This is as low as I can. Get it? And this is it. This is the position. Alright, so then, since this is the position that it's going to be in, um, when I weld it together, this is it. This is where it's going to be. Now, before I lift it up so I can work on it, I'm going to draw with a sharpie where it would be good to cut and where it would be nice to have panels lining up so I can just easily put a panel in there to patch it. So I'll just kind of go around. Especially in the back here, just kind of go around like this. Let's do that all the way around. And into the front here, mark with a sharpie right here where it needs where it's going to get welded together. That'll be the weld point. Um, of course, there'll be a panel in here. The door stops right here. You know, it doesn't go inward more than that pitch seam there, so I can keep the Miata rocker, I'm keeping that to, to keep it as stiff as possible. That'll just help with stiffness. And I can use my super high tech laser level here to to find, you know, how much do I need to cut off and yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to lose that top bolt there that holds the dashboard on. So I'll at least have three out of five bolts and maybe I can figure out a way to fasten it a little better with an extra one on either side. But yeah, that's got to come off so that the door can clear. All right, well, I guess I got it figured out for now. That feels good. Um, I'm not going to bother recording all the grinding and cutting and Sorry I'll have to miss out on the pretty sparks, but um, just too hard to record and do those things at the same time. I'm just going to try and get through that as fast as I possibly can because I want to get to the welding. I want to start putting things together. That's going to feel a lot better than taking things apart. So hopefully that's the next episode and hopefully it's not too far away. So uh, thanks for watching guys and subscribe if you haven't already. Peace out.